We got a full tank of gas, half a pack of cigarettes, it's dark, and we're wearing sunglasses. Hit it. You want answers. I want the truth. You can't handle the truth. Open the pod bay doors, now. What's going on, everyone? Welcome to Cinemates, a podcast where a bunch of mates chat about cinema over some drinks. Today, I'm joined by our in-house Marvel expert, Angus, as well as Sam and Jesse. Boys, thanks for all coming on. How are you going? Thanks for having me. Great, Great man. It's good. Very well, mate. Honored to be here. Good, good. We've got a huge episode planned. So today, we'll be diving into the recent MCU film by Sam Raimi, Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness, starring Benedict Cumberbatch. Elizabeth Olsen, and while we do that, we'll be drinking a variety of beers. Yeah, we're gonna be a ready. Got some weird bloke red wine Angus bloke in the bar. Yeah, what are ready. these exotic things? Uh, <laughs> what is this? A tropical pale ale by, by three. <laughs> <laughs> three. Three ravens. Great diversity. Yeah, awesome. Uh, so as always, please make sure you're following the podcast on your chosen streaming platform and leave a five star review. Also, check out the Cinemas YouTube channel. I post video essays on film and TV characters. So getting into it, to those new to the podcast, I like to get an idea of who our guests are and what they like to watch. So I ask a few questions about cinema. Start with you, Jesse. First question, Robert Pattinson or Andrew Garfield? Yeah, that's a, that's a tough one for me, but I reckon I'd go with Andrew Garfield. I feel like he's got a, a bigger diversity of the things that he's done and I like to see he can okay. sing a little bit, he can act, his accents are different. Yeah. Um, so I'd go with him. Good range. Nice. Yeah. Sam? Me, uh, definitely Andrew Garfield. Look, for me, big Spider-Man fan, and he's actually my favourite Spider-Man. Out okay. Of them. Big, big controversial. Call. Big, big call. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, I back that. Yeah, not. I haven't watched much of Robert Pattinson. I've watched Batman, and I thought he was really good in that, but mm. other than that, not much else. Not a no big Twilight. Tw- no Twilight. <laughs> 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 Unfortunately not. <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, I'd say Garfield as well. Yeah. Um, Pattinson is pretty similar to Garfield in the, the accent range. Um, they're both mm. British. And they actually like lived with each other. Um, really? When they first moved. I remember seeing that in an interview. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Sick. Years and, ago. And the bloke that plays Daredevil as well. Oh, Charlie yeah. Charlie Cox. Charlie yeah. Cox, yeah. yeah. All in the Is he British as well? Yeah, all British. All oh, really? Yeah, all Interesting. English. You wouldn't know, right? If yeah. you just no, you wouldn't. Movies. Yeah, it's crazy. Definitely not Charlie Cox. I didn't know that. Yeah, wow. Uh, next question, David Fincher or Adam McKay? Fincher. Really? Why? Better movies, man. Nah, Adam McKay's movies are so much better. <laughs> Why? Oh, mate, I, I just every one I've watched of Adam McKay's, I've just loved, especially mm. like the Big Short. That was just Did Adam McKay, dude. Don't look up. Yeah, yeah. The other guys, other guys. Yeah, Fincher. The way he like just the storylines he has are just like way more complex. Yeah, they always have like a massive twist. I guess they're, they're very different. You're yeah, talking yeah, thrillers versus different. comedies. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> so a bit of a tough question. You didn't What's do yours? a bit of a category there. Was just I'd, I'd probably go McKay just because I think more of my favorite movies fall into that category. Yeah, okay. But in saying that, they're both. I yeah. Both fucking. I don't um I don't hate Fincher movies by any by any sorts. Fair enough. Next question: Nicole Kidman or Kate Blanchett? Two great. Aussie exports. Yep. Um, I'm going to have to go with Blanchett yes. personally. Okay. Yes. Only because yesterday I did watch Ocean's 8, which I hadn't seen before. And oh, I thought yeah, she was yeah. very good in that. Um, and I just love I love her movies. I think Nicole has her type in movies and it, mm. it doesn't get much different to that. I just think, interesting. I think Kate Blanchett's just a classy hot woman. She's, <laughs> she she's, is. You don't yeah, think yeah, don't look up with So you don't think the same about Nicole? Oh, not as much, man. I just think Kate's just, she's got that class better. And, mm. you know, she's, she's just a good looking woman, really. And she's a, she's a gun actor. She like, is. She's done some incredible performances. Who, do you know who's been nominated for more Oscars? Uh, I think two? Blanchett. Surely Blanchett. I think she won. It'd be closer than and you Nicole think, though. I think it would be really close. Nicole just Kate won for that movie. What not? was it? Blue Elephant, I think it was. Yeah, Blue Jasmine. Blue Jasmine. Uh, something. something like that. And Nicole's, Nicole's dipped her toes in the, the directing world, I think, a little bit as well. Yeah, she I, has. I feel like Blanchett maybe hasn't. Um, it could just be my ignorance. But yeah. A bit more of a diversity there. For sure. Next question, we already kind of touched on it. The other guys or Wedding Crashes? Mate, other guys, 100%. I can watch that movie every day. 
It's so rewatchable. I'm not a Vince Vaughn fan. No way. Okay. You're joking That's me, no mate. Way. Get out of here. Does he just kind of He just seems like you? he tries too hard. Oh, that's wow. so... I still love wedding crashes, but Vince Vaughn, I don't know. I honestly think this question is the hardest thing I've ever been asked <laughs> in my life. Like, <laughs> they're two great movies, but I think I'd probably go with other guys, but okay. wedding crashes, an Owen Wilson, Vince Vaughn combination just does not miss. It yeah. doesn't miss in my books. Even in, that, even in that internship movie with those exactly. two. Like, yeah. Exactly. Not an amazing movie, but <laughs> yeah. they're, they're it's about an together. Internship. Honestly, <laughs> it's the timing they have Google. and how they deliver <laughs> it. It's so I answered, good. I answered this last week, so I'll just stick with Reading Crashes. Okay, nice. Next question, Stranger Things or Game of Thrones? I'm not Stranger Things. Yeah. yeah. Game yeah. of Thrones. I would all go on Never watch Game of Thrones and I don't really okay. plan on watching it. I just don't really, I don't look. I don't get around it. Not a big the fantasy science. guy. No. The science, yeah. no, okay. And I love Stranger Things. I think it's progressively getting worse, but you know, the mm. first season of Stranger Things was so good because it was like a low budget. At, mm. You know, yeah. unknown, yeah. unknown kids who yeah. were in it. Yeah. Yeah. Now I'm interested to see the new season coming out. Yeah. But surely they wrap it up. Yeah. Yeah. What is it? They got to wrap it up. <laughs> it's been like two years as well, right? Yeah. yeah. Well, COVID this, wouldn't have helped, right? Yeah. With yeah, production true. and everything. Yeah. Fair enough. Uh, getting into the deeper questions. Most memorable movie that you've seen in cinemas? I remember vividly, this was a hard question to answer. I'll probably vividly remember going to the last Harry Potter in cinemas. Okay. In, in the, the IMAX, I'm pretty sure as well. So great, great value for, for your buck. But it was <laughs> obviously the culmination. I'd read the series like several times. I probably yeah. was like 13 or 14 at the time. Um, I remember just going there and knowing this was this was the end in many ways. Even at that young age, I was able to- A lot of hype. Up. A yeah. lot of hype. Yeah. A lot of hype. Yeah. It was great. For sure. Good answer. Right, for me- like I was going to say Avengers Endgame and Infinity War, but I thought that was a bit too cliche. So I went a bit out of sort of a left field. I went yep. for a movie called The Impossible. Have you okay. seen it? That like it's disaster It's about the movie. Thailand tsunami in 2004. Tom Holland, Ewan McGregor, Naomi Watts. I just thought it was such a beautiful film about something that was so disastrous. And mm. just I was what, well, 15 at the time when it came out and it was the first time where I really appreciated like really good acting. Mm. And yeah, it's just... I just thought it was really amazing to see how traumatic an experience like the tsunami was. Yeah, for sure. I haven't actually seen that myself, but I've heard. Mate, good boy. Seriously, I, good I vaguely about. remember seeing it like when I'm like, yeah, 15. Holland must have been home. super young. When oh, he was so young. Yes, like, yeah, 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 like 15. And his performance was insane. Yeah, the well. brothers played it, his actual brothers as well. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. really? Yeah. Wow, I did not know that. Next question, fastest TV show binge. Do you want me to go? Go for it. Sunderland Till I Die. Ooh. Have you okay. watched it on, on Netflix? Netflix? The football one. Yeah. yeah. So I'm not a big, you know, I'm not a big TV show man. I'm more of a movie man, but I love sports docos. Mm. And this one was just <clears> the best one I've ever seen because it was about a team that's not like a big superstar team. Like yeah. Chicago Bulls or something like that. And it really showed just the passion that people have for a sporting club. Yeah. And the, Spoiler warning, but like the team's going pretty shit at the time. It's a sad story. Yeah. 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 And just seeing the emotions that plays on the community is just, oh, it's so good. Like I've watched it like four or five times. Wow. <laughs> Are they still going with it or is it just like, no, no. Insane and they that just on got, the weekend yeah, they got they promoted just, back to the championship. Oh, no so way. now everyone's yeah. saying it'd be great to get this Do upcoming season yeah. back in it. Wow. Yeah. I know. It's, it's kind of good that it's not your typical success yeah, I know. on the screen as well. It is sad, but I'll. I'll, I'll, I'll <laughs> Put another TV show out there. I'll follow the trend of the sports docos. Mm. Those Last Chance You seasons. Yeah. Um, it went from football. Yeah, never got there's, like, to that. there's like three seasons and then there's Last Chance You basketball. Um, and yeah, I just binged those. Did like, you watch the QB1 one Beyond days. the Lights as QB, well? QB1 as Where well. they show QB1s from high school teams and just shows the pressure those kids are under. So much. Like it's ridiculous. So cool how they go so in depth into it as well. I know. I would Jesse. probably go to the jump to mind was Breaking Bad mm -hmm. and the newsroom. Okay. The newsroom, I would place like top Steve five best. Carell? Yeah, is that no, it's um the, one I was it, the, the name always miss. It's the guy from Dumb and Dumber, the big blonde guy. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah it's yeah, one yeah. of the best news TV shows I've ever seen in my life. It's like wow. sort of relating to current events, like they go through like elections and that sort of thing. But it's unreal. It's on binge. If anyone at home wants to, uh, is it like a comedy watch. or no, nah, it's like drama, dramatic. Right? But there's a comedy element to it as well, in the sense that it's like sort of subtle comedy. Interesting. Yeah, it's very good. I haven't heard that before. Wow. Yeah. Uh, next question: favorite Australian movie? Mate, for me, it's Red Dog. 
No. <laughs> I did think about Red Dog yeah. when the question was It just asked. hits every emotion and it just makes you feel so Australian watching it. <laughs> <laughs> like, honestly. <laughs> but, uh, mate. It's, it's very sad. I remember because. So uh, sad. Any we, dog movie. Yeah. It's, yeah I don't know about the, the rewatch feels. value. You, like, you don't want to be that sad at the end of the movie. Yeah. But, yeah. But watching it with some mates, we all were just crying. And I was like 14 at the time. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, great movie. Good movie to share. Jesse? One that jumped out to me was actually the uh, Rabbit Proof Fence. Okay. In terms of the story it tells about yeah. the history, it's like one of those movies you remember watching in at school in, mm. in whatever class it was when you were younger and probably didn't really pick up on the significance of then. And, yeah. don't, and don't get me wrong, I probably haven't seen it recently, but <laughs> the way that the to- that's a big story to tell. Absolutely. And I think from memory they do it very well. So I'd be... Um, I thought you might have said Kath and Kim Drella. <laughs> <laughs> that was next on my list. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I was a bit worried about that. <laughs> Uh, good answers. Next question, a movie that you think everyone needs to see. Mate, definitely best movie. I still watch it all the time. It's a movie about time. Oh, oh that is my favourite rom-com of all time. Great movie. It is so good. But it's not your cliche rom-com. No, no. It's just such a beautiful movie. That <clears throat> and just, funny too. Yeah. Like, oh, I cry and every time. It just shows, like I wrote down, it just shows the great things about life and love mm. and family and stuff like that. 100%. Yeah, such a good movie. So good. I remember seeing that for the first time and you think like, oh, this is a typical Just another rom-com. rom-com. Rachel McAdams. But it's just rom-com. Wrong. But yeah. it's one of those quirky- Oh, she's done another one. Oh, one yeah. of those <laughs> Literally. Quirky concepts where it's like, oh, he's a time traveler, but the way they do it yeah. is so well. Yeah. 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 yeah, absolutely. And it really does hit that life and family aspect. Yeah. yeah. Great yeah. suggestion there. Jesse? I'd probably stick on the rom-com theme and go definitely maybe- with um, okay. Ryan Reynolds yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and some like Isla Fisher and a couple of others. It's just, again, it's not your typical rom-com, but it's just like feel good. You can watch it easily. It's not mm. like- Is it a good Sunday night, you know? Great Sunday night yeah. or Sunday morning. <laughs> Either, <laughs> anytime on when Sunday. You're just really when your emotions <laughs> <laughs> Mostly then, yeah, you're yeah, Porto's on the way. Something like that. Porto. Yeah. <laughs> KFC, sorry. I should, should have left it with that. Yeah. Oh, good answers. Uh, next question, favorite streaming service. For me, Amazon Prime, as I said, I'm a big sports docker. Mm, so they do the there. sports docker so well. And then obviously <clears> Disney <throat> Plus because Marvel, Star Wars, the mm, TV yep. shows. But, like, you know, Stan, it's all right. I don't mind Stan. Stan's got great iconic TV series like yeah. Your, yeah. your Lost's, your How I Met Your Mother's. It's got the big box sets that you could easily have in one go. And then, yeah, yeah the movies are sort of Netflix is losing its aspect, but mm. a lot of mm. Netflix movies especially coming out. Because I love it. They're like cheap, like yeah. money makers. They're really yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but they, they're clearly shocking getting, shocking they're clearly so getting views though. Like, getting views. Yeah, all those but, kissing booths and all yeah, those. But they're, like, getting view, yeah, they're getting views from like 12 year olds. Well, yeah. 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 And not, me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just quietly. <laughs> uh, next question. TV show that you're watching at the moment? Better Call Saul, the new season okay. that's uh, yeah. coming out every Tuesday on Stan. Final season as well. It's as similar to Stranger Things. It's been about like two, almost three years since mm. the last season. Yeah, right. A lot um, of hype. Obviously, a lot of hype culminating mm-hmm. up until it sort of kicks off with Breaking Bad in terms of the, the world that they're in. So, yeah. A lot of answers to be um, given, but also. Yeah, wait, so I haven't watched that. Does, yeah. does this lead up to him coming into Breaking Bad? It's a prequel, yeah. Wow. Oh, yeah. Okay. So, right, like, right, you right. still meet a lot of the characters from Breaking Bad. Like, Gus is very involved, Mark's right. very involved, but mm. there's also characters that are in Better Call Saul that aren't in Breaking Bad. So, it's like, you're curious as to what happens to them because you kind of know what happens with Gus and Mike at the end yeah, right yeah, like yeah, but it's yeah. still like is edgier seat stuff just because Vince Gulligan and all them are just like amazing so good, writers yeah, right yeah. and it really anyway amazing <laughs> <laughs> good answer mate Sam? for me because as I said I'm not a big TV show man but there's one show I'm going to commit to and I'm a bit by, uh, far behind it's Peaky Blinders okay I'm going to start watching that soon I, know. I, won't, I won't say. I won't tell you anything. No, please don't. <laughs> but yeah, except that it's really good. Obviously, yeah. yeah. I've been putting it off for too long. I need to start watching. It's it. a lot Same. to catch up on. How many seasons is that? I'm pretty sure it's like nine seasons or something, is it? isn't it? Fuck, I don't know. Yeah, like Killian's been doing it since like what, like 2013 or something. Yeah, that's like, crazy. Shit. It's a long. I'll time. find the time. Yeah, I need to. I need to get into it as well. Um, <laughs> haven't you watched it? No, I just started Vikings. Anyone I've heard some here? great things. I've yeah. heard of, I've, just, I've yeah. heard good things. I've just been seeing so many like clips on TikTok and it just <laughs> yeah. looks so hectic and like the acting is like really good from all these mm. like fairly unknown actors. Mm. So yeah, just started that like three episodes in. I like what it. they pretty, do these days cool. yeah. where you know back in the days on Netflix they brought shows out like just as a whole, but like a lot of streaming services now they bring an episode out every week. Yeah. I love it. I love it so it much. It just doesn't make you binge it. 100%. It gets the hype up. And you can talk about it during the week with your mates yeah, and like read exactly. more into it and then it just builds it out a little bit further. 
be you on need the to have a good combination well. of one that you're binging, like yeah, currently, 100%. and then yeah. one that you're like, okay, it's Wednesday, I'm yeah. going to sit down yeah. and yeah. watch yeah. this. 100%. Yeah, the other thing is like if you, say, haven't watched it and you need to catch up, so – Recent example was Yellowstone. Mm. I hadn't watched it. And then I started with Yellowstone recently as well. Yeah, yeah. everyone was saying like season four is coming out. You got to watch it. So I binged the whole thing and like <laughs> caught up. And then we could just have so many laughs about it. That's so. a long, that's a lot of. I know. You start talking about like season one, and everyone's like, man, <laughs> yeah. we're yeah. talking about yeah. years ago. Yeah, exactly. So in the last episode, we had a Cinemates elevator pitch from Pat who recommended the Netflix show Top Boy. And it was pretty good. Uh, it was filmed really well. And I've watched, a f- you know, the first sort of few episodes and I liked it. But I don't know if it was kind of the fact that there's a previous show um, called Summer House, but just wasn't really connecting with any of the characters yet. Um, and I don't know if it's an icy take, but I don't know if I'm going to keep watching it. I might call Ooh, it quits. Sorry, Pat. <laughs> sorry, sorry, Pat. Um, it was good. If I need to keep watching it, let me know. But Thank you for the elevator pitch, uh, but yeah, Top Boy hasn't quite grabbed me. And for the next elevator pitch, we've got Georgie, so let's hear what she's recommending. Hey, Michael, it's Georgie here. Absolutely loving the podcast. Have got a recommendation for you that's not the typical Cinemates elevator pitch. I think we need a romantic drama and there's nothing better than Bridgerton season two. Uh, So it follows the Bridgerton family in the Regency era navigating high society and each season is devoted to one child's story. So season two is the eldest Anthony Bridgerton season and I think it's a good blend of different genres and it's just a really easy watch. It's quite unique. It mixes modern music and costumes and challenges typical Regency era casting. Also, the cast and the characters are really good. I think they'd be great to flesh out on the podcast as well. Don't get me wrong, it does have its shallow, almost cringy moments at times, but it's Netflix's most watched English language series, so that's got to speak for something. Anyway, let me know what you think, and would love to jump on the mic if it's up your alley. Interesting. Bridgeton, yeah, have heard yeah, so much on hype about front, it. Front Netflix page. Yeah, yeah it's just, always been on the front page and never quite gotten into it. So I've, I've sat through a couple episodes. My housemate frosts it. Yeah, really? girlfriend, and girlfriend, also she watched she binge it. season two in like a day, and I was hung over on the couch. I was hung over on the couch, so I had to sit through most of it. So how was many? It good? Oh, do you know how many right main characters Jesse. there are? Because if they if they're doing a season on every like kid. That's yeah, going to go for a long time, like right? To be honest, I wasn't paying enough attention, but it, it does business. have that. I can definitely see the cringe element there a little bit. Okay, but at the same time, it I, I've got mates that their girlfriends are really obsessed and they like it too. So I probably just need to give it a chance. Interesting. Yeah, I haven't watched it myself. Always sort of seen it on Netflix. Um, but yeah, thanks for the elevator pitch, Georgie. We'll definitely see if it's worth an yeah, episode. So thanks for sending that yeah. in. All right, so to the listeners out there who haven't seen Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness yet, boys, what would you say about the movie in one word? Disappointing. I said unsatisfying. Overhyped. Yeah, yeah my one word, similar theme. I'm going to say underwhelming. <laughs> um, Great yeah, so <laughs> look, if you haven't seen it yet, probably don't. Um, no, but in, do. no, no, no. In saying that, I would still rate it yeah. highly in terms of movies. Like I, out of 10, okay. for instance, I'd give it like a, a the, 7. Yeah, the reason I say overhyped is because we're you had come to expectations. Correct. Such Correct. Good Just because the like, chat coming out of it was like... Yeah. Which is probably yeah, our own fault so in many good. ways. Yeah, yeah. And their 100%. fault. Like they've set the, the bar so high. Like yeah. everything that comes from here mm. has to be at that bar. But now. even if you're a Marvel fan, you got to go watch it as a Marvel yeah, fan. Yeah, absolutely. Just for the story. Yeah, exactly. Absolutely. Yeah, good point, sir. Uh, so you've heard it here first, and if you haven't seen it, I'll take my answer back. Go see it, uh, but we'll take a short ad break. So, boys, what were our sort of favourite scenes or quotes or parts of Doctor Strange? I think one thing we can all agree on, I think, because a lot of us put it down, John Krasinski as Reed Richards was... Yeah, massive yeah. spoiler, but yeah, you would have turned off before this. <laughs> You'd well, hope so. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> You'd hope I, so. I think I'll see you next to Mike, and I like audibly sat up and like clapped like yeah. really fast. Yeah. I feel like there was no like word that that was even going to happen. Like the, yeah. there was more sort of gossip that there was going to be Tom Cruise in it. In yeah, 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 as, yeah. As the superior Iron Man. Yeah. So seeing that happen just sort of like I wasn't expecting it. Same with you. Like I sat up. I was like, oh my God. But he like, looked so good at Yeah, he did look it good. Looked, he looked great. Like the you seen all those concept the, the photos fitting. of yeah. him? Like I don't know, it just looks so good. Yeah, because like didn't they, wasn't there like a petition to put him as. Yes. Yeah, yeah. And, and they then, made like and his these wife fake, Emily Blunt. As, yeah, yeah, 
Yeah, I wonder if that'll happen too, right? Like when yeah, they so do that. Well, the reason I'm so hyped for that is like surely that just confirms that they will cast him in like yeah, the, they the, have yeah, to now the six one six movie. They have to. Yeah. Yeah. The, I remember because we were in the same, we, we saw it together, but the cinema like cheered when he came mm, over because yeah. you, you saw all the other Illuminati and then he comes in, you're like, wait, what the fuck? And yeah, yeah it's so know, good. Right? He Such just like, like transports there because he's just he's so flopping smart around. And, yeah. I feel like Captain Carter tech. got a good reaction too, but then yeah. the rest of them, obviously other than Professor um, Xavier. See, they, when they when I saw just, it, yeah. I was there at 10 a.m. in the movies, so there wasn't many people there. <laughs> <laughs> so when he came out, I was clapping. No one else was. I was like, oh, <laughs> <laughs> Professor Xavier. No, Reed Richards, Richards. Yeah. yeah. Um, no, that was definitely a good reveal. And wasn't that also kind of filmed after? Like they saw the reaction from No Way Home with all the cameos. There was the talks about how they told Raimi to like film more scenes because they wanted to get more like cameo hype. Yeah, that's what yeah. I more thought. More like reshoots because yeah, I know there was reshoots. a lot of like crossover with everything I think filming. He I think you definitely had to toss some stuff out that 100%. didn't make sense in yeah. the end. Because I saw that with that Illuminati scene that they were never all together. Like it was pretty much all shot individually. Yeah, like everyone, yeah, everyone, everyone on the panel. Like obviously they're all so so bloody busy. Yeah, but yeah. it's interesting. Like it looks like pretty smooth and like integrated. But now that you sort of look back on it, you can they kind of weren't. see it's literally just sort of single shots of all yeah, of them yeah. except like the wide pan. <laughs> there was yeah. a there was a tweet thing that I saw. I'm not sure if it was edited or something, but um, Krasinski like tweeted, "Oh, like just got back from like a shoot from in some country. Mm. Uh, any good like movies I should go see?" And someone just comments like multiverse of madness and he said, Ah, oh, fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no way. Yeah. That's so that's good. cunny. That's the thing with like being a surprise guest. Like you don't get to go to the red carpet. Yeah. It's like yeah, you don't get yeah, to do any yeah. of the interviews. It's like you're literally just there for like the surprise value of being yeah. in that movie. And then you don't get to talk about it again until like three months later when most people have seen it. Yeah. yeah. Like, I think as well, like he had to do a similar thing to Garfield, like yeah, exactly. saying, Are you gonna be in? And he's yeah. like, nah, like yeah. it'd be hard. Not, yeah. So hard. <laughs> Having to lie. Um, I thought as well, like there, were, there were some other good parts, like the opening. I think the opening was really good. You were kind of thrust into this different universe with Defender Strange, and he's like speaking Spanish and you start and yeah. stuff. And you're like, okay, like this is interesting start. Like, what are they gonna do with this? Um, yeah. And what I about think, the hairdo? What, what about the hairdo, but um, <laughs> the, the, the ponytail? Too weird. Yeah. I think prefacing that as well, like when they released the release, the sorry, the um the runtime of the movie and it was only like two hours or something, people mm. are automatically like, oh my God, like it's not how long at all. This? How are they going to fit everything in? Yeah. yeah, yeah. But the great thing they've done over the past like two years especially is like they've done several TV series. They've done like three or four other movies so that mm. when they get into the movie, they just go bang straight away. Straight in. We're straight into the storyline. We don't need to give context. No. And it was the same in this movie, right? Like straight into like some other world. We sort of kind of maybe knew what was going on mm. to a certain degree. And then it's just straight into the movie. And I just think that's great because – then you, yeah, you're not wasting any time. Absolutely. And then they can use that two hours. You're not losing people by going too long or trying to yeah. extend it too much. Couldn't agree more. Uh, what were some other good parts that you guys um, thought? Back to the Illuminati like area of the movie. Um, Professor X uh, says this to, um, I think it might be Krasinski, talking about um, Doctor Strange, about Doctor Strange yeah. and how they, they think he's going to go down the same path mm. as Dark Doctor Strange in their universe. Um, he says, just because someone stumbles and loses their way doesn't mean they are lost forever. Oh, he yeah. said that to a younger version of himself in X Men: Days of Future yeah. Past. Yeah. So oh, I heard, I heard some chuckles and like exact some, same line, some right? Yeah. Exact, exact same, same word line. for word. Yeah, that's good in the cinema. So like all like the real fans in the cinema like acknowledge that and like it was like <laughs> yeah, it was pretty cool. Yeah, I didn't pick up on that because isn't this um, obviously it's in you know the multiverse, but isn't this version? Quite different. Like we haven't seen that kind of yellow wheelchair. No, but yeah. apparently it's no, very much the, the yellow wheelchairs from the X Men like comic yep. TV show. Yeah. Oh, so, right. Yeah, it's very traditional. It looks pretty similar yeah. to it. He's wearing, the green, he's wearing yeah. the green suit as well that he yeah. wore in that TV show as well. So that was good. Like good little subtle comic things like that. Yeah, I think um a quote as well when Strange first went to see Wanda around how they wanted her help and everything, and mm. she she says that quote around. How when Strange messes with the multiverse, he's a hero. But when she does it, she's the villain, and it not oh, being, yeah. it not being very fair. And I think I was reading that she sort of had just finished One Division and then went straight to like Doctor Strange filming, and it was like sort of her suggestion because there was so much crossover around. Like it seems weird that like he's the hero, but I'm so like that's I think that was a Elizabeth. She's Olsen. really like diving into the game. yeah no absolutely, yeah. and like she's like I'm part of this like this 
naturally to me it doesn't seem fair, right? So mm. like, can we get that in the movie? A, so bit, a bit meta, yeah. yeah. To no, follow, a, bit, a bit hypocritical though. To be fair, she's always <laughs> doing things like for her own good. Oh like, yeah, hundred percent. Oh no, and we'll, yeah, we'll she's get had into a that pretty later. traumatic <laughs> childhood, like yeah. and upbringing. Yeah, but to follow that as well, because in that same sort of scene, she says um, every night the same dream and every morning the same nightmare. Mm. So it just shows that she's completely lost, and she yeah. just like was so determined to do what she wanted to do throughout the whole movie. Absolutely, and we'll definitely dive into that more. Yeah, I thought another good part was the wedding with um christine yeah with christine i thought rachel mcadams by the way yeah one of my my favorites (laughs) (laughs) about time um (laughs) no i thought it was good because like you see strange you know after the whole blip um and it's good character development for him like there's kind of a few quotes about how he's the hero but he doesn't get the girl and it's like you kind of realize because last time we saw him was uh, Endgame, you kind of realize like back to his story of like his he, accident. He's and, pretty like, like he's pretty alone. Like yeah, yeah he's very like so. It, yeah. Have you on Disney Plus? They have the series What If as mm. well. And one of the episodes yeah, yeah. is where he goes through Christine and how much he loves her and how he stuffs up the whole universe because of it. Yeah, I think the movie could you could sort of see that coming into it. Like mm. you can see he still loves her and he yeah. still wants yeah. her. So yeah, absolutely. Um, so that was another good scene. Any other? I thought oh, so I liked I liked Chavez throughout the movie. I think it was a really good addition. I think um, she as a character was just kind of cool. Like obviously her powers are awesome, but she was sort of the only one yeah. that figured out how to stop Wanda, which was not to fight her, but to really give her what she wanted. Yeah. Because that was going to be the only way that she Wanda realized that it's not going to ever work. Like yeah. stealing your kids from your other self in another universe. Like that's just so un- <laughs> unrealistically, <laughs> obviously not going to work. And yeah. everyone knew that. Yeah. But I think just opening her her doors to that and now the fact that she can control her power mm. is like what role is she going to play moving yeah, forward? Going like it's going to be massive, right? It's going to be very so it's gonna be really cool to see how that goes. But I thought just the actress herself was really cool yeah. and seemed to really get engaged. When it came to like, because they said this movie was going to be a horror movie. Yep. But as a Marvel movie, you didn't really expect it to be much yeah. of a horror movie. But it still had those moments where it was actually quite like jump scary, which I yeah, did, yeah. did enjoy, you know, and the music that went cool. with it. Yeah. The music that went with it, the little piano tones they did. Were just yeah, that, of, like, that, old, that fight scene was cool. Old, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. We'll, we'll dive into that. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I know. I didn't, want to, I didn't want to bring it up. I actually, that didn't. Fight scene. I actually would that say that was one of my... Uh, yeah. It was just kind of interesting. I yeah. Don't know. Anyway. Back to the horror, like I think it was like really... Like perfect that Raimi was the director and yeah, yeah. Wanda was the comes from that background. Because yeah. like some of those scenes where she's like crawling out of yeah. like the the mirror dimension. The mirror dimension. She's all like cooked up, like like her body's like all twisting yeah. back into shape. Like like the ring. That yeah, that is yeah. that they <laughs> look scary. Yeah. And like Seriously. I feel like Wanda and how menacing she was during that whole like movie, it was like really fitting. Well the eyeballs mm. looking through the water scene and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's creepy. Yeah. Very, very different to what Because going into before. the movie you didn't know what the who the villain was gonna be. Like was yeah, Wanda good gonna point. be like helping strange helping. or she's gonna be against and like they yeah. didn't reveal that yeah, in I any sort of the of trailers. It was gonna be like, oh, okay, Wanda's bad for like thirty yeah, minutes. Yeah, and then she's like, yeah, absolutely. So like I kinda gonna be the I kinda like that aspect in the sense that they kept it sort of secret and it was such a it could have gone either way sort of thing. I'm not agreeing that the direction they took is correct in terms of character development and arcs, but that sort of whole sort of thing I thought was was kind of cool. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Any other parts? I did I didn't mind the dream walking scene, like the wonder dream walking, like the rock music going along with it and the cutting back and forth. Oh, of it. yeah, yeah. You know, seeing that sort of you know, development in Wanda's like abilities to do what she was doing was pretty cool. You know, yeah. it just shows that she had so much power and like she really like she was just controlling the whole thing, really. Yeah, I'm curious. Uh, well, we can might get into this later, but I'm curious to see how far her like power goes within like the next mm. like four or Do five you think years. She's dead? Well, that's the thing, right? I don't know. Like oh, she's, she's collapsed it no. on herself. But the right? multiverse just leaves the door open. Like you could have any version of Wonder in the future, right? I just think, but, like yeah. is I the six one six version? Yeah. Dead. Well, I just think, think she's, she's that being mm. or whatever. The so Nexus being. Yeah. Yeah. Where like she's the same across. Yeah. Yeah. That's the thing. There's only. Well, apparently, oh, one Scarlet Witch you, or something. You probably know this. Yeah. Uh, yeah. There's only one Scarlet Witch across the whole Yeah, so she, multiverse. every multiverse, she's the Scarlet Witch in there. Yeah. so Because she, she's a Nexus band, so she was born with the powers. Yeah. That's what WandaVision tried to go with. So there's only yeah. one Scarlet Witch with multiple Wonders. 
because I yeah, that, multiple I wanders in a multiverse. So the six, I think she's only this powerful. Is the only Scarlet Witch in every multiverse. Yeah, so if she is dead, maybe that's it. Well, she can't be. But at the end of okay. WandaVision, they do <laughs> well, this. I don't, know. I don't know. She could be. <laughs> end of WandaVision, they do a scene where, like, right at the end in the post credit scene, she blacks out into red. Mm. If you guys have seen that. Yep. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. then when she dies, she does that. That same thing. Mm. Oh, so okay. to me, when I'm she like, brings the thing down on herself. Yeah. yeah. So, oh, so everyone I don't, thought that's her, like putting like a shield around herself. But yeah, or like just vanishing into another red, another yeah. universe or something like that. So I reckon she. Yeah, I reckon she's fucked off to some other universe. Yeah, there's yeah. no way. She's, there's no way she's dead. Yeah. No. Get those kids. <laughs> Get those fucking kids. <laughs> uh, well, yeah, it sounds like we've got uh, some bad things to say about it. Let's get into it. What do we think was while, while we're on the t- yeah while we're on the topic of, of Wanda, <laughs> I think the movie itself sort of tread the exact same ground as as WandaVision in the sense that in WandaVision she went super over the top. She obviously brainwashed yeah. a whole town. She brought Vision back from the dead. Mm. She then, at the end of well, WandaVision, realized that what she did was wrong and they were all transgressions, obviously, and let go. But now we're sort of back to square one and yeah. she's doing almost the same thing in this scene, uh, in this movie, sorry, taking over herself in another universe, trying to get the kids that were born naturally in another universe yeah. as opposed to hers, which were just magically conjured. So I feel like you're crossing all sorts of lines there. Mm. As, as, I, it just, as I said, it doesn't really fit the character arc because we thought that she got over that and was going to, yeah. as we said, going to this movie might yeah. not have been the villain. <clears throat> I don't know. I feel like they just almost I, backtracked a little bit. Could I devil's advocate that? I feel yeah. like WandaVision, that series, she was acting very emotionally, but she was Wanda in that state. Yeah. So you're saying she's this being time, influenced by the Dark At the end hold. of WandaVision, yeah, yeah she, she yeah. goes and we see her reading that book and yes. everyone sort of was like, okay, that's the Dark And she's in whatever. the Scarlet Witch. Yeah. 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 She's yeah. developed as a Scarlet Witch and everything sort of just becomes like a bit more sinister and evil. Mm. Oh, yeah. um, so first it was like immediately after losing Vision, like reeling yes. um, you know, in pain. And then now mm. it's just like- Influenced um, by the Dark Hole. Influenced, evil, yeah. chaos. Yep. Yeah. yeah, no, I, I can agree with that. I think like, even though it's this like, you know, Scarlet Witch taking over Wanda, it's still like the same kind of journey. Like, yeah, you know, 100%. being evil. Yeah. We are watching the same thing. Same story. Like, yes. Yeah. yeah. And like, even though it may be different. Yeah. yeah. It feels like it's the same. Yeah. And I, I knew that she was going to be part of it, but I didn't know that she was going to be the villain. So at the start when she's like, she just turns out to be evil out of nowhere and she's talking with Strange and she's like, oh, wait, you didn't tell me about America or whatever. And I was just like, wait, what? Like, is that is that it? Like, you're just evil, are you? So I, I thought it was a bit, I don't know. I, see, I wasn't with it. See, in the comics, like, she's such a complex character and there's so much you can do with her and mm. I think the movie just didn't do enough justice with her. It just made it seem like she was just destruction, chaos. Like, yeah. Just wanting to get what she wants, but she's just a lot better in the comics, and she does a lot more. Yeah, and yeah. She, is she more torn in the comics? Like, does, yeah, does Wanda play a bit more of an influence? Like, she's more. Like, she like gets trying to retaliate back with the Scarlet Witch. Yeah, and she also, you know, she she holds a grudge in the comics very easily as well. So the little things like she just like in the comics, she says no more mutants, which was apparently oh, what yeah. this whole movie was going to be based off to get mm. the mutants in there. And then she's just got so much power as well. So I don't think if she has died, like we haven't seen the Scarlet Witch's power at full potential. I definitely yeah. think she's still around. They they have to they have to use her to develop yeah. the rest of like the universe. Yeah. And what happened yeah. to, in WandaVision? What about the White Vision as well? Yeah, I thought he was going to come thought he back. Might, I thought he might. Oh, yeah, come he's just flying off somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> he's, <laughs> he's literally just flying <laughs> off. He's just, he's just, he's just, he just Icarus himself. Also, just chilling in wow, wow, that actually raises such a big point. If she's trying to find her kids in another universe, wouldn't there be a universe where Vision is still alive? That's what, still I, read, alive. That's yeah. what I read someone and was saying. And she just doesn't give a she's fuck about him anymore. Yeah. She must, he must have been in 818. But can he like? Can he have kids naturally? Maybe there's a universe where he can't. Well, I'm sure there would be. Don't get me wrong. But, but that was is he alive in that universe either? Like, what if he was killed in, as part of like Thanos? Spider-Man, that, yeah. that's uh, true. Spider-Man um, No Way Home, how they talk about that absolute point where... You know, for Spider-Man, it's them saying with great power comes great responsibility. Maybe in every universe, Vision does die. Mm. Okay. So, yeah, that is, that is true as well. You never know. I think just on the point of Vision and, like, the irrationality of her motives, like... Yeah. My first question is, how did she... You know how there's the two... There's the evil, like, starfish, and then there's the evil being at the very start in the yeah. other universe. How did she... If she was controlling them, 
how was she doing that? Was she dream walking? Is that yeah? Like how did she have no? Because at that point dimension? she didn't know how to dream walk. I don't think. So, so how did she get them? That's a great question. <laughs> like. How she has, she has that power to take over people's minds. Yeah, but she's finding these beings Through from universe. other multiverses. You know, right? you know, in the show What If, how Strange can like conjure like multiversal beings yeah. and like suck like. Yeah, suck but how in. can she do it? That's the question. Uh, she start, might have similar power. <laughs> the <laughs> oh, like they can it's conjure like, them. The the there's lots of spells in there. <laughs> there's so a lot of they can, they can conjure them, but she just couldn't obviously travel the multiverse because if she would have, she wouldn't. She need, would have just needed gone, a chance. Yeah, yeah. She would have just yeah. gone. Yeah. She conjured it into six one six where she already was. Correct. Yeah. And then, but how she communicated? Communicated with it yeah. and yeah. said, "You know, go get this America chick." Also, <laughs> just quickly as well, couldn't even if she did get Chavez to help her travel the dimensions or whatever or take her power whatever couldn't she just have found a universe where what the wonder is dead but the kids, kids are, still are alive and she just goes there well then it comes back to this whole thing around the scarlet witch being alive in every universe like is she the only scarlet yeah, witch or enough. is there scarlet yeah like okay you're right though like it's a it's a weird motive i thought like they're not great kids anyway like why don't uh, you just go adopt them <laughs> yeah. no, are we gonna lead into the ice cream scene now oh that was fucking insane <laughs> no, put that down <laughs> that, that, <laughs> that <laughs> ice cream thing oh that's the, the ice cream pain, thing the song. they sing that they song turn around about on the wanting couch ice cream that was oh, right. the I mean, most painful I mean, thing ever. Just going to be like, no, turn around and leave. I don't want these kids anymore. <laughs> that was my kid. I'd be like, shut up. Like, Honestly. Oh, it goes on for ages as well. MCU cringiest scene. Like, it's Absolutely. Just, you reckon that's like top three cringiest men? For me, top one. It's just <laughs> I reckon so hard even watch. outside of the MCU, that was one of the most painful things I've ever yeah. had to sit through. Because they're not that young as kids. So like they're Honestly, acting man, like little babies. Looking back at it, it might have been like, 20 to 30 seconds. And it it was felt must, like, I felt like it was longer yeah. now that I think about it. It was so long. Because they were singing it really slowly. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and Wanda's like getting around it like fucking. It's really bad <laughs> acting from the kids. I know they're kids, but like the way they act. Like, yeah, be better. Be, come be on, better. come on. <laughs> oh man, shut up. <laughs> oh, that's so funny. Um, so what about the CGI in that like first battle scene when Strange leaves the wedding, um, goes helps America? Yeah, um, with the monster. I thought the monster was fine. Um, and the destruction that was going on in the city was fine, but a couple of the CGI um, clips where it like throws Wong or throws Strange yeah. into like a yeah, car. I agree. and <laughs> so then the, the body like smashes into the side of the car. It looks like immediately. I'm like, oh, that was so fake. Yeah, and there's obviously been so many fight scenes that we've seen in like these MCU movies that I have never really like picked up. Mm, yeah, because they're usually forward. really yeah. good. Yeah, yeah. Do you think they're getting progressively up. worse in the MCU? I think their CGI is from, from, from a production standpoint. It seems like it it's getting lazier. It's getting a bit lazy. They're like like trying to pump them out quicker, right? Like, they've yeah. got like they've yeah, probably got like four or five TV shows in production. They've mm. got like three movies in production, probably. So they're probably spread pretty thin. And yeah, you know, the but you look at like the it. Avengers, the first film, the CGI of the New York battle scene. Yeah, it was fine. That CGI is better than some of the CGI yeah. we get today. That would have taken years to make, though. Almost, I reckon. I get that, but like, but still, like this was the first big. MCU movie in a while. Like, yeah. And I don't know, like you would have seen the trailers for Thor. Mm. That looks way, like it's obviously only a trailer, but like yeah. that looks so good. How come this, yeah, definitely had that kind of poor CGI element. What about the CGI then when they were, they did that first multiverse travel and they went through like 10 different multiverses, like they turned into the colours and oh, they yeah, turned yeah, into yeah. like the bits. Like I thought that was, okay. that was yeah. good. I thought that was pretty that was cool. Okay. And clearly that would have taken a lot of time to produce, but it's almost like but that's where the it would have been cool is. to explore those different worlds a little bit more as opposed yeah. to as, as hard as that would have been to like film a minute or two in that colour world. Each, like yeah. it would have been cool just to explore <laughs> different ones where they – kind of just explored New York City and what it looked like yeah, differently. Yeah, they just did 616 yeah. 838. Pretty much, right? Yeah. And it was just like a more technologically savvy New York. Yeah. yeah. Like, I, it would have been cool to go into these really different ones. Yeah. And the same at the end when New York was, like, destroyed. But, yeah. yeah. On, on that, I thought coming into this, I thought that there were going to be way more universes that we were going to explore. Yeah, yeah. Like, 100%. There was two. And yeah, you get a minute much. little montage. It wasn't really a multiverse. It was, no. <laughs> <laughs> it was a like duo verse. <laughs> um, but <laughs> let's let's get on to the big one, but the musical fight, I reckon. Yeah. Let's get into <laughs> so it. So Jesse, Jesse. Yeah, give us your give positives. us why why you like the it. only reason like at the time, don't get me wrong, I was like, this is this is kind of interesting and it dragged on a little bit too long than yeah. it needed to. I think the first back and forth between them, I was like, oh, that's kind of cool, a little different. Is that like part of this universe? I don't know. For instance, <laughs> as you said, it's the MCU has been going on for so long. I've seen so many fight scenes. Yeah. It's two like clearly very powerful beings. It was just something a little different for me. So I didn't hate it, 
but I could see why people would dislike it. It was so kind of weird. To on your point about being it too long, like when Thanos fought Doctor Strange in yeah. Infinity War, it was changed up with a lot of different things. <clears throat> where this one was just the same. I thought it was cool at the start. I was like, oh, that's pretty funny. But then they kept doing it, and I was like, kept this on is going just so it. annoying. Yeah, like, it did go for too long. <laughs> on that Thanos fight, like you see how powerful Doctor Strange is. Yeah. Like he puts all these illusions. Yeah. I was like, okay, if these two are gonna face off, it'll be like epic, and they'll. Like yeah, like one Doctor Strange fighting another. Fighting another. Yeah. Strange. No, they're just gonna fight with a few musical, musical notes. notes, and then the final <laughs> singular <laughs> note. <Dude. He's> like, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he throws a singular note, and like that's what blows the whole thing up. Like what? <laughs> Why do you do that at the start? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and how does he like realize that? Has he just been fighting other but people? See, with that gives notes? my point about laziness in the MCU right now. Yeah, right? they just that, thought that's that was That's them cool. not being lazy though. That's them thinking, how do we do something different? But it looks lazy because they're just doing the it same was, thing. Yeah. Like it would have had to take someone to be like, well, let's like try this like musical. Yeah, yeah I'm, all I'm all for that. I'm all for that. Yeah, yeah exactly. Just trying, just exactly. Just yeah, trying yeah. something different. But yeah. I think this one just missed. Yeah, that's it fine. Yeah. 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 And then so the singular note like throws the Doctor Strange out, out the, the window. building, yeah. and then he just Pales lands him. on a fence. Gets convenient, impaled. right? Yeah. 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 <laughs> Where didn't he have the cloak on him as well? So can that cloak? Yeah. What? Yeah. Oh my god. So many holes. So many holes in that. Um, what about as well? A few holes. Uh, we already talked about a bit. Illuminati, they're uh, only in the movie for very little and they just get killed so easily. Can I say first on this point, I like sort of like how they got killed so easily yeah, because it I'm the same. Shows, shows how, how powerful dominant she is. Wanda was. Yeah. But then we can move into the fact that like Well, it's like Reed Richards, smartest man on the planet, and just tries to talk her down. Like and obviously, also, yeah. like clearly, it's obviously them underestimating things, but you've got to realize, like, he gets pulled like spaghetti. <laughs> yeah. Seriously, and like that death on Black Bolt was just like yeah. that. That was a cool horror element of the movie. It was, and then it's, was but good. then it was like Captain Carter has no powers, like she does, but she's, like, she's got a shield. Just and then, impaled, but then yeah. that fight went for like ninety seconds. Yeah, but she kills the most like, powerful one she, there in like three yeah. seconds. But also Captain Marvel, Marvel too. Yeah. just like, yeah. gets crushed. Captain Marvel cannot get crushed by some, no. I know. some like not at all structure. Yeah, that was insane. I think it's got to come down to like, especially like Reed Richards, John Krasinski, because Fantastic Four was coming down out in the future. So yeah. I personally, I thought it was cool seeing him there, but I didn't like, cause I didn't like the, like I was getting more hyped around the Fantastic Four movie mm. and seeing him in that. So getting this little cameo from him was quite frustrating, mm. but I see why they did it. But you know. it just confirms the role and then also makes us more hype. And people, well, you'd hope so. Right? It'll, put people in, it'll put people in seats for the Fantastic 100%. Four That's movie. true. 100%. Yeah. I thought it was cool. Um, Professor X does last a bit longer, and his fight is different. Like obviously, mental. it's more mental, mental and he's his like fight was that, was scary. Just, that was scary. Yeah, that was a good. And then his movie. neck gets snapped. Um, that was sad. That was pretty too. dark. Well, like you got to show some up, We've grown to... up watching. Yeah, we've grown up <laughs> yeah. watching. Him. I know, and we've seen him die how many times now? Like three. So, so do you reckon that's, the end for, do you reckon that's the end for him as well? That was just Has a little. Fan. Be, that was just a little sure. fan. Has to be, and he would have been paid mozza for that little yeah. like yeah. ninety seconds. Yeah. <laughs> he's so old as well. So Patrick old. Stewart. But Mordo doesn't get killed. Like he's the only one that doesn't yeah. get killed. Yeah, he's the one that pisses everyone off the most because yeah. he's just such a little whiny baby. Apparently, yeah. with yeah. Mordo, there was going to be a scene at the start because you know the end of Doctor Strange. He he's hunting says there's too hunting them down. too many sorcerers. too many sorcerers. Yeah, um, there was going to be that, but they just didn't include it. Um, maybe that so was that part that of like the reshoots that they like sort of got ordered to do. Yeah, maybe. Um, just a quick one as well. This really pissed me off. So <laughs> they're, at, they're at the Carmitage, um where Wanda's like going to face off against all the sorcerers. Yeah. And they realize that she's going to penetrate the building through the like reflections of the water. Yeah. And so they say, oh, cover them all up. And they start covering them all up. And then Chavez just goes like, oh, what's this puddle here? And then you get like a jump scare. And I was like, what? Like, I remember that, thinking that, that at so the time. Dumb. Yeah, I remember thinking that at the that, time. Just, that, that in itself just really pissed me off. I Just like weird little trying to be scary. Yeah. There were, there were good ones, but yeah. that... I don't know why that just cheesed me off. What up. about the zombie strange? Did you find that like good? And that whole like all those black like ghosts flying out of him. Like yeah, that was I a bit intense know. and I didn't really understand. Like they'd never really been part of any sort of scene in the past. Yeah. What were like they when called? he like was trying to take when he was trying to take over a dead body, like we didn't know that wasn't a rule. Yeah. And then all these beings are flying out of the book and I thought that was kind See, of that but, then, but then all of a sudden he just flicked a switch essentially and like used them as yeah. his like 
cloak to get up to the. It comes down because as we were talking about how they edit out so much, like mm. for me, the movie there was some scenes where it just seemed like it was so edited, so, so rushed. Yeah, so yeah. rushed as well. Which is weird because they had more. T- like it comes back to yes, you want a succinct movie and you don't need to milk it out sometimes, yeah. but. For when a big movie MC- like this, yeah. you're opening so many doors for future movies. Yeah, like, yeah. surely you need to answer all these questions. You can have some scenes where you sit down and ex- like explain, yeah, and yeah. plan. Like, like, because not everyone's going to have Avengers convers- movies yeah. have them sitting around what you would call like a round table, and yeah. they're you know going through the plan, boom, 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 so that yeah. you know what's about to happen. Maybe stuff won't go right, yeah. but yeah. Mm. But we're at this point now where it's like, if you're not like up to up to date with like all these Marvel movies, and you're not like a dedicated fan, like you have no idea what's going on in exactly. these movies. Yeah. So like, are they just catering? For that fan now, and they're aware that their fan base is that big that they're going to get enough gross box office earnings. Yeah, like not your standard movie goes just going to go watch this. No, because if they do, they're going to hate it. You got to respect the fan as well. Like, yeah, yeah. and they're they, so deep now. Yeah. Like you got to keep going, and then it's like when yeah. does it when does it end? Yeah, like not not everyone can be like a No Way Home where you know it's just so Same. good on all levels, exactly. fan service, whatever. But even if they just, because you said it was two hours, right? Even if something they just like made that. it like two hours fifteen yeah. or something, just it was two hours fourteen. I think okay. it was that, two including including credits. Yeah, I know what you mean. Like Marvel fans are gonna want to see as much as possible. Like, yeah. So just they won't make complain it, about a long movie. No, no. no. So just make it They'll that happily bit longer. Three hours in a cinema. I'm yeah. happy to do that if the movie provides good service and you know yeah. actually makes. That's the one thing that this movie didn't do that we can all agree on is like the fan service. Yeah. But also the MCU world building, like this movie yeah. didn't generate any world building into it. I think maybe that post credit scene at the end. Yeah. But, With Charlize Theron. Yeah. But can we back to the fan service? Can we, did anyone have any like cameos that obviously were probably like a long shot that you wanted to see? Like for myself, I, instead of professor X, I probably wanted like Magneto involved. Yeah. Uh, yeah. In, in the comics, he's is he not the father of He's um, the father of Wanda. Wanda, yeah. yeah. So I thought that would be really cool if you know he was maybe the father of Wanda in another universe. Mm, and we like yeah. I didn't mind the shout out when they did say Tom Cruise might play Disney. Yeah, I thought that would be cool. I Especially because it just ties back to him originally being offered would, the role. I was think he? it's just For the Iron respect Man. that wow. Robert And he didn't Robert take Danny it because he didn't want to be wearing a mask ah. in like the fight scenes because he just thought that then he's like, there's no point of him being in the movie. So he said no to it and then they went to Downey Jr. Wow. Idiot. Yeah. I thought that what was an gonna idiot. be a big one. Yeah. Other than that, like not really. I wouldn't have, I I know he's quite busy at the moment, but like Pietro, like maybe him coming back as well. Yeah. Yeah. And then not also not botching him like they botched him in yeah. Mm. yeah. That was weird. But yeah, Magneto is a good shout because he is his dad. Is it her dad yeah, in, in the, the comics. comics? Yeah. Yeah, I saw this thing that um if Magneto was to be in it, like obviously the Avengers are less part of it, but let's say Magneto was in it when they were like you've got um, Bucky Barnes who has a metal arm. You got Iron Man who uses a metal suit. Like he, it would have just been so <laughs> powerful. Yeah, yeah. Just War Machine. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, but but yeah he's always switching sides. Magneto just based yeah. on what yeah, that's he true. thinks he's right. Yeah. Um, why don't we touch on the post credit scene though? Mm. Um, the first one. Bruce what was Campbell. the first one? Bruce uh, Campbell. The oh, the hot dog guy has been bashing himself. He's in all three <laughs> yeah. of the Sam Raimi ones, just yeah. as like multiple. So yeah, Bruce Campbell in the Sam Raimi Spider Man, he's in all three of them. Three, as well. and, yeah. three and he was meant roles, to be. Yeah. He was meant to be Mysterio in. Really, in I would not have liked that. In Far From yeah. Home. No, no, in Spider Man Four, that was going to come out. Uh, they never did. Oh, okay. But it was going to be like a really quick scene of him like arresting him as because he's in all four. He's in all three of them as a different character. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't. I just thought that was. I thought it was. I thought fine. it was a waste. I thought it was absolutely fine him being in the movie, like like uh, quickly yeah. in the movie. Yeah. Don't, don't, don't waste the post credits on it. Don't, don't, yeah, waste, don't waste the post credit. I've written don't that down. Him. Don't give me a post credit. Like build, as Sam said, give me some world world building. Give me something yeah. that might happen in the next like three years. Yeah, and also that I'm going to randomly think about. Oh, we wait there that. for so long. Like you got to make them good. Yeah, if it's just something like that, you just like as soon as that happened because. As soon as that happened, I was just got up and was like, "Well, that was the biggest waste of my time." To yeah, see. literally, because the as we talked about our one words, the movie was underwhelming. Yeah. If they did a really good world exactly. building post credit scene, I would have been like, "Okay, hundred percent." What that would have changed your whole view yeah. of the movie. <laughs> <laughs> Not no, my no, whole view. It would have just left a better taste yeah. in my mouth. Yeah, I agree with that though. There is the and there is the Charlize Theron one, yeah. so we can discuss yeah. that. The um, she's like the girlfriend. Her name's Clea. Yeah, yep. she's the girlfriend of Evil Doctor Strange. 
So is he evil now that he has yeah, the third eye? I think um, I think that just that's what happens when you mess with the dark hold. Right. Yeah. No, but I is think, what I I'm think aware. maybe he someone is uh, dreamwalking inside of him. Yeah. Because remember when the evil Doctor Strange gets impaled, mm. he opens his opens third eye yes. to Rachel McAdams. Yes. So he's like sort of still alive. Yeah. Right. Potentially. Okay. So he might have, you know, just dream walked into regular Doctor Strange and remember he walked crosses the street at the end and he like sort of wigs out and like yeah yeah, out. yeah, 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 yeah. But yeah. then she opens up in that credit scene when she opens up, that's where Dormammu, who was in the yes. first- She's Doctor the daughter yeah. of du- Dormammu, I'm yeah. pretty sure. Daughter. She's Some, the daughter, yeah. She's got something to do with Dormammu. Yeah. Oh, shit. So it's going to go down sort of like, dark. Like, and it was like that like world where him. Dormammu was yeah. in the yeah. first Doctor Strange. She goes like, like come on, babe, like, let's go. Yeah. Like, yes. uh, <laughs> yeah. Well, it's just, it was just so weird how she just cuts it open as well and it just opens yeah, up yeah. into this space world. And space. that's why- it. Similar to your note, I left with a bad taste in my mouth because it's like, well, now I've got more questions than yeah. when I walked into this movie, which was a lot of questions. So it's like, to what end? Like, where are we going from here? And exactly. how much bloody longer is it going to take? I thought, <laughs> my build up, I thought with Kang the Conqueror in. Yeah, so Loki, when does he come like, in, right? Apparently, like, he's meant to be the next Thanos. Yeah, yeah. So I thought maybe in a multiverse where yeah. he's such a multiverse 100%, 100%. character that 100%. he might have yeah. shown up Remember in some aspect. They teased yeah. it at the end of the first Loki. Avengers, like oh. when they brought Thanos in. And he just goes like, "Fine, I'll do yeah, it." Yeah, exactly. Yeah, oh, like, yeah. That yeah. is like yeah. so many years That's later. That's good. You're like, "Wow, okay." Yeah, because that um, was like ten years before, or maybe like eight years eight or something years yeah. before Endgame. Yeah, 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 like that. It gets, that, good. It gets the, everything moving forward Absolutely. as well. Yeah, yeah. So do we? So that means there's another Doctor Strange movie, probably with a Charlize Theron. Has to be. Has to be. Doctor, and they, they go to Dormammu as well. Dormammu is such a powerful character as well. Yeah. Well, didn't he? Get rid of him in the first one. Yeah, the first one was weird. How oh, he locked him in. He kind of locked him in. Just locked him yeah. into a time loop, and he got. So he hasn't him, actually so. been defeated or anything. No. Like that. Okay, but um, but when you and you think about those post credits as well, um, at the end of Guardians two, there's that Adam Warlock um, post credit yeah. scene. So we haven't seen Adam Warlock for like he's going to be he's coming Guardians in the next five three. six years. So yeah. is he Guardians three? Who's that actor that's going to play him? It's uh, the, Will Poulter. Will Poulter. Yeah. I think he'll be. I'm so Kenny. Oh yeah, isn't yeah. that um from um Where the Millers? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Kenny. Yeah, Kenny. Yeah. Yeah. He's, he's looking ripped. He's looking yeah. ripped. Yeah. 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 like good looking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I was really shocked when someone said that because I watched Where the Millers recently. No, and I'm just picturing with that big nut. All Chris Pratt has to do, all Star Lord has to do, is just chuckle, spy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's down for the count. Nah, I'm keen for that. And also Thor, very, very yeah, excited yeah. for July, that. isn't it? It's pretty soon. Yeah. So that is a wrap for Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness. Thanks for listening to this episode of Cinemates Podcast where a bunch of mates chat about cinema over some drinks. Big thank you to Angus, Sam, and Jesse for coming on the show. It's great chatting with you. Thanks, mate. Thanks, Thanks, man. It's a great Thanks way to gone. spend our Monday. Pleasure. No worries. Uh, so as always please let us know what you want to hear about in future episodes and if you want to send in a mailbag or do an elevator pitch to me send us a DM on Instagram or TikTok at cinemaze underscore otherwise we'll catch you for the next episode thanks so much for listening to this episode of Cinemates make sure to follow us and leave a review on your chosen streaming platforms also check out our Instagram, TikTok and YouTube channel for more Cinemaze content In the spirit of reconciliation, we acknowledge Australia's First Nations people as the traditional owners and custodians of the land and pay respect to the Camaragal people of the Eora Nation upon whose country Cinemaze is based. We honour the storytelling and culture of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander communities across Australia. Also, in the spirit of chatting with mates, remember it's always important to check in with those around you. Whether it's friends, family or colleagues, sometimes they may be going through a hard time and chatting with them may reassure them that they aren't alone. If you or anyone you know is ever struggling, call Lifeline on 13 11 14.